Hello everybody, my name is Esconce. Uh, recent AA plane interaction dev blog dropped. A lot of people had questions. Uh, I took some questions and answered them on the North American forums, but there have still been a variety of questions. So I figured it would probably be prudent for me to uh, make a video and go a little more into depth. Uh, some people have said, hey, this thing is really hard to read. Um, because I'm aware of the mechanic, it wasn't uh, that hard for me, but after just going through this with a CC, Clyde Plays, uh, who will also be able to have a video on this topic, but that'll probably take a few days before it gets put out, um, I'll try to break this up in the manner that I spoke with him about it, because that might be a little more uh, understandable. So, in the near future, a closed testing session will be held to trial a new mechanic prototype related to air defense. Uh, closed testing session is very important, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. In the upcoming sessions of the public test, we will continue testing the possible changes to air defense that we already spoke of earlier. Uh, this sends you to the link over here to DevBlog395 that came out back in November, um, which talks about uh, how planes can be shot down and they won't just recompress. If there's a plane shot down in the middle of the squadron, the hole will remain there. If the plane is shot down in the front of the squadron, the hole will remain there, and that can affect the uh, attacks that come out of each of those groups of planes that would attack. So if there are nine planes, the first three are an attack group, the middle three are an attack group, the last three are an attack group, and if you shoot holes in those attack groups, then those attack groups are weaker, and they will stay weaker until you either use them or you send them home. Um, so big thing, closed test session, public test. This is saying two different things. Closed testing sessions are concept tests. This means that something is new. We don't know if we're gonna go further with it. We don't wanna put tons and tons of coding time trying to you know, make something super cool and special and then find out, oh man, it doesn't work and then just abandon it. That would be a waste of time. So instead, we're going to use available mechanisms, things in the game, try to get it to where it's a workable thing that we can test, and then do that in a closed session. Uh, we do have uh, testers, I think they're clan super tests and super test uh, that help us in kind of off-site testing. Uh, so that way it can be a thing, we can check it out, and if it works, cool. If it doesn't work, we didn't put a lot of resources into it, we can move on to the next thing. So closed testing, means this is completely new. It could be a thing, it might not be a thing because we haven't put a ton of uh, a ton of time into it. Versus public test, this is a different animal. This is where it starts being integrated into the client and it's gonna go to the PTS server to be checked out. Uh, theoretically, it could be available to other people to experience. That is generally indicative of there was a test, the test decided to move forward. Additional coding happened, additional interactions happened, and we're gonna see it in a more live environment where uh, players, not necessarily on the live product, but players can interact with it. Uh, that, that generally indicates it's moving forward or it's moving further down the line. So first two sentences, we go to the next one. This time, a number of new mechanics will be added on top of the changes we previously mentioned. That's this dev blog. The depth charge airstrike armament will now have an alternative firing mode with distinct characteristics and aiming mechanics. With this alternative mode active, the airstrike aircraft fly to the indicated point and start patrolling, similar to a fighter consumable. So, because I'm me, let me go ahead and pull out paint and I'll even make this new. Um, what does that mean? So right now, you've got your ship. And oh no, there's an enemy sub over here. You know, we saw the sub, or we saw the we saw the ping or something. We saw the, let's see, doot. We see the little, the cloudy ping thing. In which case, you select your airstrike armament, and you're gonna hop up, your camera's gonna zoom up into the sky, just like you're using a spotter plane, and you're gonna look down on the water, and you're gonna place your reticle. You know, you wanna bomb here, you wanna bomb here, whatever, you're gonna place it wherever you are, and there's a little bit of a skill shot interaction between you and the sub. So effectively what this is saying is we're going to be using that interface because we already have that interface in the game and when you do a closed test you're not trying to like do all the coding up front you're trying to use assets that already exist to save you time so instead of this being depth charges this would be a fighter consumable so you're going to pop somewhere on the on the water and let's say there are some enemy planes uh enemy planes over here coming in that's pretty terrible looking. I gotta, I gotta redo that. That's just bad. 
<laughs> uh, so we've got some enemy planes coming in, and there's a whole bunch of them, and they're looking really sus, and they're looking really scary and stuff. And they're coming in, they want to go after you, so you could theoretically, knowing what is coming, or seeing what might be coming, look over and place your airstrike. Or not airstrikes, sorry, your fighter. So in this case, a fighter would come to this spot and then start to patrol. Now, if the enemy planes go through a patrolling fighter, that fighter is going to latch onto the enemy planes. Now, what happens if the fighter latches onto the enemy planes? While being pursued by aircraft deployed through this alternative airstrike boat, those squadrons completely lose the ability to detect ships. Their ability to surface spot goes away. They can, however, still see ships that are detected by allies. So this means that if this CV is coming in to make this attack, if there is another ship, uh, another ship that is able to spot, oh goodness, my, uh, my paint foo is out of practice. If there's another ship which is able to spot and give detection on this target, well then the ship will remain lit. But if these planes getting latched and hounded by this fighter consumable, or this little fighter interaction, whatever, uh, if they suddenly can't see because they are blinded, if this doesn't exist, then this thing goes away because there's nothing spotting it. Uh, so we can go in and let's let's look at a few examples of what that might mean. Example A. You've got a cruiser and you've got a shimikaze. And let's say up here is a cap. And the shimikaze is, you know, he's looking at he's looking at going into the cap. He's looking at doing a thing. As a cruiser, you're not over committing. You're staying at a distance, but your little DD bro, he's coming up and looking to do cap stuff. And nobody's detecting the DD right now. Uh, there's no surface uh, ship spotting him. Maybe there's, maybe he's in radar range, but he's not radared, whatever. He's dark. And enemy uh, planes are coming in. So we'll say these are midway dive bombers. They're coming in. You can see they're making a beeline to the Shima. Maybe he was previously spotted, whatever. Theoretically, through this mechanic, uh, the cruiser here could target and send out some fighters. They could send them here. They could send them over the ship, whatever. And that's what they do. So after whatever the deployment time is, whatever the patrol time is, if the enemy midway dive bombers come in and end up getting latched, then they lose the ability to spot the Shima. So the dive bombers can hover around. They won't be able to see anything because if the Shima is not spotted by that player's team, it will not be spotted by that player's planes, by the CV player's planes. This would also affect hybrid planes. Uh, so hybrid bombers coming over from some of the new battleships or because uh, those can be a pretty big threat to DDs. Uh, obviously midway bombers are a threat, etc. There Immediately there was some feedback saying, well, wouldn't the dive bombers just drop a fighter consumable and the fighter consumable would spot the DD? It's an excellent point. This is a concept test. This is not a finalized product. This is just a seeing if it works. So issues, problems, stuff like that can be spotted and then figured out and addressed if it's something that moves forward. So here's option A. Option A is friendly dude here decides to help his Shima bro by deploying something that keeps the planes blind and keeps the Shima stealthy, which is cool. Well, let's look at another use case. So we have, for instance, a cruiser that is using an island to fire over the island. It's probably a little too close, maybe. Let's move it a little further away. And because he's firing over an island, doing his thing, shooting his shells, pewing his pew, um, he's not spotted and everything's cool. Well, along comes, along come the fun police, and they start to get a line where they can spot this cruiser and give information on what's going on. If the cruiser had an air strike, uh, ASW planes or whatever, and this mechanic exists, theoretically they could see the planes coming in. Once again, they could look and try to make a skill shot and shoot the planes either where those planes will be, try to lead them, or maybe just if there's a specific area where the cruiser might be spotted, just go ahead and put the planes up so that uh, that would block the CV player from getting information. And sure enough, if those planes do latch, if they come in, drop patrol, whatever, and latch onto this, then the vision goes away and the cruiser stays dark. So in one interaction, your teammate can assist another teammate 
by restricting uh, CV vision if the uh, interaction ends up connecting. Uh, you can also use that interaction to protect yourself from spotting as well. So there's a spotting interaction with this, which is very important because one of the largest issues people have talked about in terms of carriers is the spotting, the spotting, the spotting. This has an interaction with spotting, but it also has other things. Um, unlike fighters, these planes are capable of pursuing an enemy squadron for an extended period of time. So the obvious question is, well, how extended of a time? This is a Remember, this is a closed test session. This is not a finalized product. Tuning, balancing, figuring all that stuff up can come out after a mechanic is tested if the mechanic is interesting enough to pursue. So try not to get bogged down on the minutia of, well, what does this mean? Well, what are the radiuses? Well, how does it all work? Because right now it's just seeing, is this something that we want to devote effort to? Uh, also, they do not cause significant damage to their HP. This is a very important point. Uh, if you had, for instance, a setup where you have multiple ships, you've got ship, 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 whatever, and they each have two charges of ASW planes, if that's even the, how the mechanic still ends up being worked, whatever, then theoretically, you could have a wall of fighters, you know, put out, right? You could completely like block this off if each of them use say two charges whatever in a short period of time that may completely block off an approach the cv player is still expected to be able to play the game uh and if these ships are spotted by surface spotting because they're shooting or because they have other interaction granted this example is probably not that great because the cv player doesn't want to attack three grouped ships but for the purposes of example if there is this wall of doom a CV player could fly through, get latched, lose the ability to see, and then will take some additional damage. So they'll take some health, some hit point loss over time as the planes are latched, but they would still be able to fly through to torpedo something or rocket something or do whatever they're going to do in the course of playing the game. So it doesn't stop them from being able to have interactions, but it does stop them from being able to have spotting interactions while also dealing some damage to the planes. And an additional thing, AA effectiveness will be higher against squadrons that are pursued by airstrike planes. What does that mean? Well, we quite literally say what AA effectiveness is here. AA effectiveness is a new parameter that sets the chance for continuous damage to be dealt to the aircraft from the attacking group of the squadron. Otherwise, the damage will be dealt to the aircraft in the rest of the squadron. What does that mean? So, I think I may have talked about this earlier, but you've got, as a CV player, you've got this big health bar. Big health bar represents all your planes. So, we will go ahead and block this off in terms of like, well, that's not correct. Rawr. <laughs> uh, we'll go ahead and block this off in terms of like what it could look like for a nine plane squadron. First three, each of these is a group. This is the attacking group because these are the three planes that will attack when you go in and you strike something. This is also a group. This is the second group. And then for the purposes of just like delineating, we'll use another cover color. This will be the third group. So this is the first attack. First attack, second attack, third attack. And the way that AA works right now, if eh, a little hard to see, there we go. The way that AA works right now is that all AA is focused on the last plane and then the next to last plane and then the next to last plane. And it goes this way. Uh, in terms of continuous damage, which means it's very likely that the first strike will get through because you have six planes of armor. After the first strike has gone through and those planes go away, maybe the second strike, the follow-up strike, is not so easy if you've lost planes on the way there and it starts digging into this. The change in this dev blog, dev blog 395, talks about the ability to do this differently. Instead of starting at the end, you're going to pick a plane and that plane's going to be attacked. This one, uh, this one might be attacked until dead. And if it is, boop, it's gone. It goes away. You have a squad of three, a squad of an attack group of three, an attack group of two, an attack group of three. It doesn't get filled in. AA efficiency, to go back to this, AA effectiveness, I'm sorry, is the likelihood 
that one of these initial planes are the ones that get targeted first. And if so, then Continuous is going to hammer into a plane, hammer into a plane, hammer into a plane, uh, shoot into a plane, shoot into a plane, shoot into a plane, and eventually take it out. And since this hole doesn't get filled, instead of attacking with three planes worth of damage, they're now only attacking with two. So that would mitigate the incoming damage by 33%. If it actually happens that a second plane gets targeted in the attacking flight before it's able to shoot, then you may only have 33% damage. So this makes not only attacking a ship that with, with capable AA very scary because you may not be able to influence it very much if your attacking flight keeps getting nailed, uh, it certainly makes attacking groups even more scary as the AA accumulates, all the different ships are pumping in, and they're all going to be picking a single target and dumping into it. So uh, you could quite literally be blunted by some powerful AA. If your planes are latched, it makes it more likely that this area is chosen in terms of where that happens. But it does mention that this is a chance. This is not an automatic, you know, if the plane latches, the CV will just have their attacking plane shot down and there's nothing the CV can do. There is a higher chance that one of the attacking planes will be selected, focused, and potentially gunned down before it's able to make an attack. At the same time, the airstrike aircraft themselves are incapable of detecting enemy ships under any circumstances and they are vulnerable to AA. Um, that was a concern from players, like if there was ever the chance for you know a ship that's hidden to just throw out some planes over here and get some some easy spotting, like, hey, what the heck, that would just be terrifying. And actually, in a Flamu video, uh, that was one of the first things that he thought, oh my god, they're giving plane spotting to every surface ship. That was an initial reaction before he read the dev blog. No. Just like ASW planes, when you put the ASW on the water, the planes go out, they don't spot anything, they go away. Same thing with this. You place a fighter on the water, the planes go out, they patrol, and then if they don't latch anything, they go away. They can be shot down by enemy AA, so enemy surface ships would be able to shoot them down. Um, I haven't actually asked if that means fighter consumables would latch onto them and shoot them down. Stands to reason, but it's not a question I've asked, and this is a closed test. So, again, if it's in testing, it's not a refined idea, it's an idea in testing. The new mechanic will allow surface ship captains to more actively defend themselves and their allies against enemy aircraft by reducing their spotting potential. And it will make the airstrike, airstrike armament more versatile. Uh, I have actually read a few people that were a little concerned about this, like, this doesn't make sense. Or, or the idea that, like, well, if you're using your depth charge consumable or depth charge charges against CVs, then that means you're not using them against subs. Uh, first things first, if you're in a ship and there's an enemy sub doing enemy sub stuff and there are enemy planes doing enemy plane stuff, that's, you're interacting with two players. That's a 2v1. 2v1 is a rough situation to be in in any case. So if you're prioritizing, can you work against this? Can you work against this? It's the same thing if you add an additional ship. If you put an enemy ship here or even two, then... All you're doing is stacking the odds against yourselves, which is going to make any situation harder to deal with. Uh, I would try, I would suggest not focusing on the outlier situation, but what does that actually mean in terms of making the airstrike uh, armament more versatile? Right now, there are ships that have ASW strikes, uh, ASW airstrikes, and if you load into a match and there's no sub, you don't use them on anything. There's nothing there. Uh, sometimes um, higher players or savvy players will throw a, a airstrike behind an island and see if there's AA tracers or something to indicate an enemy is on the other side of the island. But outside of that, they don't do damage to anything. They just might give you some information if somebody leaves their AA on. Uh, so if that means that you're in a game that's no, that doesn't have a sub but it does have a CV, you can interact with those planes. If you're in a game that doesn't have a sub but does have a hybrid, you can interact with those planes. Stuff like that. Okay, so we've gone through the dev blog. Hopefully that's answered any uh, questions or concerns as to what all that is. Um, big question, why are you doing this? Like a very common refrain I've seen from the community is, if you're going through this whole convoluted process to deal with plane spotting, why not just reduce plane spotting or make it mini-map only, etc.? 
Uh, if you think about how our game works, our game really thrives off of skill shots. Uh, what does a skill shot mean? So a skill shot is typically you'll have one character versus another character. Whatever, I'll just make them both red. And one of them is effectively going to throw something at the other one. And it's going to take some time. And the other character might be able to duck it or jump it or do something like that. If it strikes, it deals damage. Otherwise, they're going to have some kind of back and forth. If the enemy character is very close, it's very likely they're going to get hit because they don't have time to react. Um, having planes used in this way or a consumable in this way means you have a distance to placement and then it's there. And ideally, this could be something which gets tweaked into a skill shot format. And if you wonder, well, what, what do you mean by skill shot, skill shot format? Think of uh, Dutch cruisers that have an airstrike. The airstrike has something like, I don't know, 12 to 14 second lead time in the case of the airstrike. And you're effectively going to try to guess where the enemy is going to go so that they will actually interact at that point. You might miss, you might hit. There's enough time in here that there's uh, some play in that interaction. If instead this was reduced down to, say, three seconds, you're probably just going to hit the ship all the time. There's not really a skill shot interaction to that. Um, so the use of this fighter concept allows... The enemy CV to do stuff and for the surface ship to interact with the planes so you guys are having a back and forth interaction in the sense that you can throw stuff at this while they're trying to throw stuff back um, just to go on a little bit of an aside uh, I'm actually I'm known as a CV guy that's my thing I've had a lot of conversations with people that are super frustrated with this or that X and Y and uh, I do try to have long form conversations with people to try to dig into, you know, what are the specific issues that people are having with. And the best way that I can describe uh, this one specific pain point that I'm going to talk about now is if you've got a surface ship and the enemy planes are coming, they're doing the thing. It's repeatedly been mentioned that the surface ship player feels like they're not really doing anything while the CV player is doing something. That's a little hard to visualize, um, or at least it took a while to visualize it, and I found, I think, an example which makes it a little easier to understand. Uh, but just to finish this off before we go to the example, there are two things that the surface ship can do. The surface ship obviously has AA, which some people like, some people don't like. It's a strength and a weakness. It's a strength in some ships, a weakness in others, etc. But you can use your AA, you can use priority sector, you can use commander skills if you want to boost it, you can use the O key uh, to make it stronger, etc. Those are obviously things that you could do. Also, you can maneuver. You can turn, turn in, back up, try to juke, etc. However, when a match is joined, our random battles have 12 players on each side, which is a lot of players. And shells are very, uh, very impactful. <laughs> uh, if you end up showing side to an enemy ship, that could be, you could get one shot, which is strange for our game because our game tends to have a lot of damage interactions, a little slower paced. But if you are forced to turn in such a way that another ship could just straight up take, either kill you, sink you, do a lot of damage, that becomes a very hard situation. So the maneuvering is not always available. So in terms of that back and forth, if part of the back and forth is often constricted, players will discount that part of the back and forth, and that's reasonable. So here's my try to translate this example. I want to imagine another game like Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat, and I'm not going to draw stick figures, I'll just have person A and person B. Person A and person B are going to throw punches and kicks at each other. This guy's going to do stuff gonna throw punches, gonna throw kicks, this guy's gonna do stuff, punches and kicks, and they're gonna back and forth and they're gonna beat each other up. To try to describe in another way what players that are voicing frustration with the surface ship and the planes are, it feels like one person is able to do punches and kicks while the other person is able to hit a button and hope that something useful happens. Uh, basically, it would mean that this person's punching and kicking, this person's hitting block. Or this person is hitting a button where like a semi-automated response and it just doesn't feel like there's that back and forth. 
So if you start to look at this, uh, the proposed mechanics, in terms of that back and forth, it means that you and your ship, you can reach out and you can claim space for your shima and say, no, if planes come here, they're going to get latched, they're going to lose their spotting, they're going to take some damage, it's more likely their attacking stuff gets shot down. If you have another ship that you're sailing in a decent proximity to, you could throw out planes, uh, you could throw out stuff and try to intercept incoming attacks or make them less likely to succeed. You have the ability to reach out and affect the planes while they're attempting to reach out and affect you. And ideally, that back and forth is kind of the... Uh, it's a skill shot based interaction. It's a little bit more of that back and forth that I think people have been asking for for a long time. Uh, so, could be cool. Hopefully, going through this dev blog has given uh, folks a better understanding of kind of what it's talking about and sort of like the reasoning and methodology behind it. I hope this was useful for you. Um, it is, again, a closed test. And it could be that it gets tested and completely thrown out. Could be. It could be that the ideas are pretty cool and it ends up moving forward. Could be. Uh, we won't know until the test happens and it gets reviewed and decisions get made. But I have to say, I personally think it sounds pretty nifty and I hope going through it and kind of talking about it um, has allowed other people to think, yeah, that does sound kind of cool too. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's it. I hope this was helpful. Have a good one.